Hi there. Now in this video what I want to do is talk to you about the roots or solutions of a quadratic equation and how they're affected by something called the discriminant. Now I'm assuming then that you're familiar with the form of a quadratic equation. It's ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero where a, b and c are constants. And in an earlier video, I showed you that you could get x by using what is called the quadratic formula. x equals minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all divided by 2a. Now, this quantity inside the square root here, b squared minus 4ac, is often referred to as the discriminant. Okay, the discriminant then is b squared minus 4ac. Now what I've got here is three quadratic equations which we'll run through. And to save time, you can see that I've written down the values of a, b and c and passed these values through the quadratic formula to try and work out the values of x for each of these equations. Now, when it comes to this first one, x squared minus x minus 6 equals 0, we substitute our values of a equaling 1, b equals minus 1, and c equals minus 6 into the formula. And when it comes to the discriminant here, we've got minus 1 all squared, which is 1, and then we've got minus 4 times 1 times minus 6, which is plus 24. So 1 plus 24 gives us... 25. So the discriminant in here is 25. And if we work out what this comes to, well we've got 1 plus or minus the square root of 25, which is going to be plus or minus 5. And that's all divided by 2. So that means that therefore x is going to equal 1 plus 5, which we know is 6, divided by 2 is 3. Or we get another solution, or root as we call it, which is 1 minus 5, which is minus 4, divided by 2, and you get minus 2. So what we've got here then is something called different roots, different solutions. Now let's have a look at this second equation, x squared minus 10x plus 25 equals 0. With this one, I've listed out the values of a, b, and c. a is 1, b is minus 10, and c is 25. Put those values through the quadratic formula, and you're going to get this result. Except I haven't worked out what the discriminant is. So we'll just work this out now. We've got minus 10 all squared, which is 100. And then minus 4 times 1 is minus 4, times 25 is minus 100. So we've got 100 minus 100, which gives us a discriminant of 0. So what we've got is 10 plus or minus the square root of 0. Well, the square root of 0 is 0. So we've got all of this divided by 2. So that means that x could be 10 plus 0, which is 10, divided by 2, is 5, or you could have 10 take away 0, which is still 10, divided by 2 is 5. So what we've got here are what is called equal roots. We've got one solution. Some people say we've got repeated roots, but we'll just make a note of that. We've got equal roots, or one root, that root being 5. And what about this next equation? For this one, a equals 2, b equals 2, and c equals 1. Putting those values into the quadratic formula gives us this. But for the discriminant, we've got 2 squared, which is 4. And then we've got minus 4 times 2 times 1. That's minus 8. 4 minus 8 is minus 4. So we've got a discriminant of minus 4. Now when it comes to working out the square root of minus 4, what is it? Well, it's certainly not minus 2, because minus 2 times minus 2 would give us plus 4, not minus 4. 
If you tried it on the calculator, you'd find you get an error. There's no real solution to square rooting minus 4. So what we've got for this is that there is no roots, no solution. So just to recap then, no roots. So hopefully you can start to see that the number of roots is determined by the discriminant that I've got here in red. We get different roots when we square root a number greater than zero. We get exactly one root when we square root zero and no roots when we square root a negative number. So in summary then, let's just go back to this one. We get different roots when the discriminant b squared minus 4ac is greater than 0. Equal roots when the discriminant b squared minus 4ac equals 0. And no roots when the discriminant b squared minus 4ac is less than 0. Now the next thing I want to do is show you what the graphs would look like in relation to the roots. If we were to graph y equals x squared minus x minus 6, it would look something like this. We'd have our roots at minus 2 and 3, our two roots. It's a positive parabola because it's got plus x squared. So you're going to see that it intersects the x-axis at these two places where y is 0. For this one, what do you think is going to happen when we sketch the graph of y equals x squared minus 10x plus 25? Well, we've got one root. And so the curve touches the x-axis at that one root. In this case, x equaling 5. And it's a positive parabola because you've got plus x squared. And for this one, what happens if we were to sketch the graph of y equals 2x squared plus 2x plus 1? There's no solution. What we notice is that for this graph, it doesn't cross the x-axis. Now if I was taking a situation where I had two roots and it was a negative x squared, well I would expect the graph to be inverted. It would cross the x-axis in two places, but it would be inverted, something like this. If I had a graph with negative x squared here and it only had one root, it would be a parabola coming up and touching the x-axis at that one root. And also for something like this, if there was a negative x squared term here with no solution, I would expect my graph to be inverted, something like this, say, but never crossing the x-axis. So I hope that's given you some idea then about how the discriminant then controls the number of roots that we get in a quadratic equation. And in later tutorials, what I'll be doing is giving you some examples, common examples that we get when we have to work with the discriminant. Okay?